Hi, I'm Dr. Barbara Becker-Holstein, and I'm back again with the shared universe. And tonight, we're really sharing our universe, which is amazing. We're going to share it with Robert, who is a, a filmmaker and in charge of a very special film festival in Dublin, and he'll explain more about that in a couple of minutes. And I have one of my favorite colleagues with me, Hiram. Um, let you say hello. Hi, everybody. My yeah. name is Hiram Ortiz. Uh, I'm a teacher, and I'm also one of the directors of the Hang On to Your Shorts Film Festival here in Asbury yeah. Park. Yeah, yeah. So you're into filmmaking, and you teach, and I'm into filmmaking, and I'm a psychologist, you know. And we were just saying before the uh, we went on air that I was, well, I loved acting in school and had all sorts of fantasies. Some of them uh, were pretty delicious but never came to pass, and I found myself ending up as a school teacher, loving kids, then a psychologist, and for many, many years I've been a psychologist. I've probably listened to so many thousands of stories that they all begin to blend in various strange little ways. And I never felt or believed, no, I shouldn't say that. I hoped and believed in some strange way the universe would let my creativity develop over the years. And here I am, and it has been allowed to come forth. So I'm now an official filmmaker, as well as an author, and I still am a psychologist. But the fascinating thing about my trip in filmmaking, and one of the reasons I wanted to have Robert share on this show, and Hiram also, because we're all sort of crossing fields, is that I developed a niche, just as um, Robert has. So my niche is having uh, the actors and the actresses, particularly kids at this point, I haven't delved with adults doing this, but taking their smartphones and taking the script and taking my directions and then going home and doing their scenes. And then... Uh, uploading the scenes and showing them to me and then going back again and maybe not and maybe they're perfect sometimes they may do a scene ten times before they'll even give it to me but this has been a very authentic way I feel to merge drama with some of the intensity of coming of age that the kids are going through anyway even the actors everybody's going through it if you've been between 11 and 20, you've been there. So um, that's a little bit about me, and I want to now let Robert jump right in, and then we have a teenage fellow waiting on the line who has done a selfie about uh, his concerns around school drama, so we're going to get to him later, too. So, Robert, come on in. Hi, how you doing? Uh, okay, so um, thanks for that. That was a, 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 a beautiful introduction. Uh, I suppose I can kind of relate to you a little bit in terms of, 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 of my journey and when you're talking about uh, niches and, and things like that. And I suppose, and you're also talking a little bit about kind of um, people using phones to tell their stories. And I suppose where I came into this story was very much, I, I had always been involved in festivals and always been involved in films, but I'd never actually been a filmmaker uh, up until not, we'd say a couple of years ago. And I was always kind of kind of pushing myself to go back and learn. Um, and I went back and learned. And there was a question that was asked off before we began about kind of, because I'm based here in Ireland, there was a question asked about the Irish film industry. And basically, I went back to study and I found, you know, I, I love cameras. And I love directing. But I found that I was being taught. I was being taught how to make films in an industry that I necessarily didn't think really existed anymore or possibly being taught uh, the, the tools and materials I was being taught on how to tell my story was a little bit outdated there was very much a format you needed to follow and I didn't really agree with it and I felt that I used my phone for everything I had it in my pocket uh, it was a powerful tool I mean your entire workflow was instilled on it and I said I felt like why do I need to kind of jump through or, or follow these specific steps when there's a tool 
that I understand that's easy to use that I'm used to because I've been using one for the last 15 years I've had it in my hand. So for me, it was a no brainer to use that as a tool to tell stories. And that's kind of where it happened. I shot a film, a stop motion animation on my phone. And then I realized there was a whole community of filmmakers out there who were doing the same thing. And in Ireland or, or the kind of pushback I was getting here was basically, you know, like, yeah, it's great if, for an amateur. It's great if you're starting out, but you'll never be, you know, kind of, it'll never be an accepted <clears throat> norm. And that kind of bothered me because I felt like, you know, they always say everyone's got one good book in them. And I kind of <laughs> felt everyone had one great film in them. And I figured you had a phone, particularly if you're younger, it kind of demystifies the whole filmmaking process. And it's easy for you to grab your phone and go out and tell a story. And, you know, it kind of strips away the, the barriers that might come with not having the right enough money to buy the right technology and really just becomes, I know how to use my phone and I have a great story and I'm going to go out and do it. And that's kind of where I started. And then what happened? What were some of the next steps? Well, the next steps after that, uh, well, I, as I said, my background was in festival management and I was kind of, um, I was making shorts and I was making things on my phone and I was very interested in the education side. I was very interested in kind of showing other people how to use their phones and how they could go about doing it. And I said, what's the best way to do it? So I said, I'll combine my two passions. So I set up the Dublin Smartphone Film Festival as really a way to kind of showcase everybody out there what people were doing with their phones in the worldwide community. And then it was kind of the idea being is that you go to my festival, you'd watch a bunch of excellent shorts or documentaries or music videos, and you'd come home and you'd pick up your phone, you'd look at it and you'd say, this isn't a phone anymore. This isn't a device for calling my friends or texting my friends. This is a tool for me to tell stories. Yes, yes. That makes perfect sense. Would you uh, mind if we go ahead right now and show... Um, your two little f films that give a sense of the festival, all the yeah. excitement in the festival, and then the other one which shows little clips of so many different smartphones from around the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the one one was a video that was put together just to give you an idea of the kind of energy of the event, and the other, as you said, was uh, kind of a clips and snippets of of kind of the worldwide community and the submissions that we got and kind of the stuff that people were making. So yeah, fire ahead. That'd be great. Okay, you know. In a few hours, I will be on a plane to Dublin. Vanessa Donoso Lopez. I'm an artist from Barcelona. I started to work with clay. The idea of this material being a direct link to the place where we find ourselves in a specific time. It's the restaurant interno, como tal, que es realmente un taller. Es un área donde se está capacitando todo el tiempo, como tú has podido ver. <risa> bon, mademoiselle Dupuis, notre société a opté pour un recrutement 2.0. Ah, mais attendez, c'est vous qui permettez d'espionner, moi je le fais. Hein. Vous avez le droit de faire ça It's the sun. I don't like the woods anymore. What do you think? That was awesome. That Wasn't was it? truly, truly international. Uh, you know, Spanish, French, and other languages. That was uh, black and white. Very artsy. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, there was a really, a really nice mix. Um, and now I will say there was it was a huge international uh, contribution. Uh, not as many Irish submissions that it was as a homegrown submissions that would have liked, but there was a huge international. There's a lot of 
kind of great international filmmakers doing stuff, particularly from um, Spain, particularly from Portugal, from Canada, from Australia. And that's where a lot of my submissions were coming from. And you're going to be running it again this year. Yeah, 100% going bigger and better. So last year uh, was really aimed towards kind of just showcasing. And this year it's going to lean more on kind of showcasing what's out there and also kind of the education side of it, kind of workshops on how to make your own shorts, uh, kind of the tools and equipment that are out there and how easy it is to kind of get set up and go out and make your own kind of professional, uh, kind of really well good looking shorts and stuff like that. But it's going to be really geared towards the education side of it. So I've lined up some pretty... uh, pretty great um, kind of homegrown uh, people using phones in the industry at the moment here to kind of show people what they're doing. And, and there's been one or two shows that have been shown on, on the local networks here and um, that were filmed using iPhones and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's really surprising when these people speak and um, because a lot of people have been watching these shows on TV and haven't realized that the footage they've been watching have been, has been filmed on iPhones yes. and things like that. So um, that's kind of excited. I want to kind of share that, those kind of stories and experiences with people. Um, so they can really get an eye opening into kind of the professional standard that is being used with phones at the moment. Um, and it's not just kind of an, uh, an amateurish type thing at this present moment on. I want to jump ahead and ask a question. Um, do you think that eventually there'll be kind of a war between people trained in filmmaking and graduate programs and whatever, and there that there may be an effort to stifle smartphones taking as much as the, of the of the filming world as they may eventually be able to do uh that's an interesting question it's funny one whenever i do kind of talks or workshops and things like that i always kind of hammer home the point that you know the entire production workflow is instilled onto a phone so you can write shoot edit score market distribute your film all on one device and some of the feedback I get from people is like, well, hey, you're not worried that you're going to kind of be taking away people's industry jobs. And my answer is always kind of, well, like you're always going to need a good script writer. You're always going to need a good cameraman. You're always going to need a good cinematographer. So in terms of kind of roles and film roles and things like that, I don't think it substitutes you as kind of a one man band type thing. In terms of a, a, a people trying to stifle the use of phones, no, you see it now kind of in the LSRs and things like that like the, you can see a gap closing between phones and the kind of equipment that day-to-day filmmakers are using out there so I do see it in that regards that you know there'll be uh, kind of a what's the word I'm looking for uh, uh, there'll be an erosion and, and I, I think that phones will start to take up take the place of more day-to-day modern mm-hmm. cameras and stuff like that at this present moment in time I know that Steven Soderbergh has shot like Unsane and things like that and that was released in cinema and stuff like that but in terms of kind of a, uh, the two friction, I, I, at this present moment in time, no, maybe down the line. But as we know, there there is camera companies, Red are out there, and they're they're manufacturing a phone that'll hopefully have the same quality as as a as a as a more heavy duty camera. So you're going to see that kind of merging together. But in terms of friction, it really depends on I suppose the industry and things like that. Here, I would see it a little bit. Well, the way I look at it is it's just a different canvas, uh, you know, uh, accessibility to a camera, having access to, to a way to, to be creative only enhances pretty much the palette of creative content out there. Um, you know, some people paint with brushes and some people paint with this and that. But you know what? There are always kids that pick up a crayon and make beautiful art with that, too. And probably that awakens something within them to make them explore. So uh, I think that there's plenty of space for smartphone technology uh, in this beautiful and fleeting creative process. I think so, too, of course. I I think that um, many kids who have used smartphones and also made their own videos, whether it's part of a film or just a two-minute video that they send their grandmother or whatever, they will be more, they'll feel a boost in their self-esteem and their self-worth and that they can get a message out there. That's so important for kids. And I wonder, you know, if you could stay on hold and we could bring in um, um, (laughs) Antonio 
and let him show, after we say hello to him, show his two-minute selfie, which is really not, I didn't script it at all, and it's not uh, chiseled out or edited or anything. It's just expressing his thoughts around school drama. Okay, may I clarify something yes. before we move on to Antonio? Uh, I did not want to suggest that having a smartphone is the same as having a crayon to create beautiful art. Uh, you know what? A, a $10,000 an hour studio is not going to make a $2 song sound like a $10,000 song. And and a great work of art, a great song, would sound great on a ninety, you know, on a fifty dollar Casio uh, keyboard. So uh, I just wanted to clarify that. I I, I thought it was a weird analogy. Um, well, a lot of times, you know, just to, to further that, that's a good point. A lot of times in our society, like if you're not extremely talented, people will diminish you. And I think something like smartphones give people a bridge to become more their authentic selves. And uh, I love the video that went, went around the world a few weeks ago where there were these two men, I think in Africa, but I'm not sure, could, could have been Indonesia. I, well, somewhere I've never visited. And they work like in water with with whatever, rice, whatever they're doing, and it's boring. And they have these big oxen. And they decided to dance as they moved the oxen rather than just schlepping along. And the video went viral. And it was great. You know? Yes. They, they came to life around the world, these two guys in a mud patch, you know? It was fabulous. Yes, as the storm approaches Ireland, just like the hurricane <laughs> approached the Gulf Coast yesterday, um, there are going to be a lot of people that I hope are careful that are going to go and, and film the scenes of the storm and everything. And, uh, you know, that's art in itself. And that's created yeah. with a smartphone. As long as they're safe, please don't yes. don't be careless <laughs> out there. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Antonio. Finally. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Good. So, were you listening to the first part? Uh, no, no, I, could, I couldn't hear. Uh, I couldn't even see it. No. Okay. Okay. Well, we were talking to. We're still talking to a filmmaker from Dublin, Ireland, who's going. To, who's having a second uh, smart camera film festival in Ireland, and you can only send in your film if you've made it with a smartphone. Oh, wow. So who knows? Maybe the selfie that you did for myself, that's cute, you did for myself, will be the <laughs> first uh, thing that may intrigue you to move on to do more smartphone filming. Um, I had suggested to you a subject around school drama, and uh, I think you felt that that was pretty relevant. Am I correct? Antonio? Do we lose him? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Sorry about that. Did you okay. hear the question? I didn't hear the question. Okay. No. Um, I had asked you to do a, a, a short selfie film around school drama, and you came up with something very perceptive. Um, has school drama ever been on your mind? Uh, think. Uh, yeah, I can. I'm. I've never been directly involved with school drama, but I've been secondhand affected. Mm -hmm. uh, my friends have been affected by it, and I guess it creates this negative image of them. Yes. And with that negative image of them, I'm friends with them, and I'm associated with it. So rumors are spread around, and people have said bad things about me. People have said bad things because I'm related to the person as friends. So... And so I was, I'm sorry, but I don't want you to tell everything you're saying in your little selfie. Let's see if we can find your selfie in the list and play it. Hello, my name is Antonio De Leon, and I'm here to discuss school drama. School drama is a tool used by students to direct attention towards others or oneself. It can be based on attitude, behavior, or appearance, and the effects of this are mainly negative, as they can ruin relationships, social status, and even mental health. People create drama because they feel a need to make their lives more interesting. They decide they want to impress or degrade others due to personal cause. 
This creates tension among groups, which furthermore creates allies and enemies. People can cause drama by trying to be funny with their friends or trying to start a fire with someone they're not particularly fond of. I can recall an incident in school, one where a couple broke up with one another, and like many school relationships, it didn't end there. The boy tried to spread lies and rumors about his ex-girlfriend, and things escalated as they began to involve other people. This led to fights and arguments being started, and although nothing was physical, relationships were ruined, all because some boy tried to ruin some girl's social status. School drama is a pointless idea that one gets to make a mark, one that can hurt many and gain little from. School drama can also be caused unintentionally though. One may perceive things to be something that is blown out of proportion, but since that's how they think it is, they spread the word around. And even a small whisper can spread like wildfire, especially with the presence of social media like Snapchat and Instagram, which gets the message across quickly. The target's reaction to school drama is also important as it is a catalyst to what happens next. The best thing to do is stay calm and don't act irrationally, otherwise things can only get worse. What you should do is respect your own values, beliefs, opinions, but most importantly respect yourself and others. That's the best way you can stay out of school drama and be happy with yourself. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, school drama plus uh, social media platforms equals uh, something very bad, disseminating yeah. very fast. Yes. You see that with your kids? Oh, of course. Of course. That's. You know what? Um, obviously, we, we compare a lot across generations and everything like that and and in a way i think they they have so much so many more wonderful toys than we did we actually had to evolve creativity <laughs> um but all that being said i would not trade my life for theirs in a million years i think that all all the things that were difficult in our age are enhanced and 10 times more difficult than theirs because everything is instantaneous every knee-jerk emotional reaction um, and obviously, even as adults, sometimes we 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 do things and we th we think twice and and we take it back. You can't do that when when you're so reactive. I see it every day. I live it every day, and and I feel Antonio. I feel you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Do you think you'll be interested in making more selfies? Was this an interesting project? It, 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 I really enjoy this project because it's not like other ones. It's like the pressure. There's no pressure from other people like watching you when you're taking it. You're doing, you're at your own time, your own pace. And I, I just I feel happy and it's easy to say what I want to say when I'm talking to a camera than it is to talk in front of many other people. So I really do enjoy doing the selfie project. Oh, good. I hope you'll do more for me. And I know uh, watching this film... Um, it was a little bit stationary, uh, but don't worry because when we make the final video on tonight, we'll insert it so it the uh, the visual goes with the auditory. Um, yeah, no, it's no worries. Yeah, yeah. and um, yes, I think it's very important. And you even probably even practiced and maybe even did it a couple of times before what you sent to me. <laughs> I, I have actually, yeah. There's times where I stutter, times where I was like, yeah. oh, I don't like the way I said that. Can I suggest something though? And obviously, it's easy for me. Um, I'm not the one that assigned this project to you. Uh, when when you do something like this, just honestly, just look at the camera, talk to the camera. You know, human interaction, human conversation is seldom, you know, flowing. Some there are fits and starts. You know, there are ums, there are pauses, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I understand you have to do multiple takes, but unlike a scripted TV show or a scripted movie or something like that, actually the humanity of you, the imperfection actually adds to the product. You know, just yeah. talk to the camera. 
That sounds good. Yeah, that's sounds very good for the next selfie. Yes, that's very good advice. So I'm sure you'll do more, and maybe it'll also take you into a form of acting. Well, you you do do some acting anyway, right? Yeah, yes, yep. I do. I do it with um, Pam Richards. Yes, that's great. Is that's that your great. friend? Yes, she's <laughs> terrific. She told me about her yes. friend Pam Richards. That's awesome. Pam even, uh, I was up in her studio, and she did a whole bunch of classy uh, photographs of me with her photographer, and oh my God, it was like... You know, it's it's awesome. like, yeah. oh, it was like, oh, it was awesome. It was great. So I have to ask Antonio. Yes. Antonio, are you a fan of baseball? Are you a fan am, of the Red yeah. Sox? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, they're killing it. <laughs> yeah, they beat my Yankees this week. But, hey, good luck. They're a great team. <laughs> yeah, they did. They're a great they team. They des- I'll tell you what, the Yankees deserve to get spanked. But uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank can, you, yeah. Can Antonio stay on while we go back to, um, let's, to let's Robert? Okay. If we do lose you, I'll be in touch with you for another time. And Antonio, very nice to meet you, yes, even if I'm on, on this format. <clears throat> so I think we have both of them on the line. Okay. Awesome. That's great. Robert? Yeah. And Tony. Hola, Robert. So, I was wondering. Oh, we have an echo going. Okay. Okay. I'm wondering if we could play my 32nd film, my shortest film that I ever made, Selfie, appropriate title, because. It gives so many quick views of this actress doing, you know, living a life of a teen. And I think it shows some of the potential of having kids doing filming this way. Plus, it brings up so many questions of what's on their minds. I have a secret. I wasn't going to tell you this. I don't like the way that I look in the mirror. I'm in love. I need my mom. Stupid baby. Guess who's going to get all the love and attention? Not me. My mom and dad said that I could go on a plane all by myself. I was so shocked. I could have died. I was so confused and concerned about things. How big can a family's secrets be? I feel empty some days and then completely fine others. Do you think I'm weird? Thank you. And I thank Megan Brown. Dublin. (laughs) (laughs) What did you think? I, I thought it was excellent. I've, I've met the actor before. Yes, yes, uh, she came have. to our podcast, yes. and, and she's a lovely child. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, I hope you I hope you guys work together some more. I, we're, well, we're, we're, we're working on our next film, so God willing, we'll work together in February. That's, that's when yes. you're shooting it? Yes. Awesome. Yes. And that'll take her through age. I've had... Uh, this is the third year, so she's gone from being uh, 14, 15, and then this film should be 16. Excellent. I think you should send more uh, assignments to Antonio, too. Yes, I'm going to, and I'm going. I'm sure he'll take your words, I could tell. He's a fast learner. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you know what? I would really like to speak to uh, uh, Robert, is it, from, from the Dublin Fe- yes. uh, Smartphone Film Festival? Uh, Mr. McHugh, is it McHugh? It's oh. you, but people often say McHugh. It's easier that way. Okay. Okay, I have to. Yes, I have to save that information because I definitely would like to speak to you so much. So, what else would you like to tell us, Robert? What else do you want to share uh, or discuss? How about your submission? Your submission information. In terms of what about it or in how we go about doing it. Uh, so um, generally, so it's funny that when you, when you played your short there for the, and it was 30 seconds long, and, and one of the things I really noticed about the, 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 
the type of submissions that we're receiving at the festival is I've noticed that the running time for a lot of things has become a lot shorter. And I assume it's a lot, be, a, a lot of times it's because people are consuming and, and information a lot quicker. So it's, and it's easier and faster. They find easier and faster ways to tell stories. And I, I always comment on Vine being a really good way that people learned how to edit. You know what I mean? Even if they didn't learn the traditional aspects of editing, people learned from creating vines that it was a really easy way to put together a story really, really quickly to get a point across really, really fast. So I noticed that a lot of submissions that are coming through, and I remember when I first set out, I set it, you know, maximum 15 minutes, and I had to program an entire event. And I started panicking in the first year because the submissions that were coming in were two to three minutes long, and I was like, oh, God, I'll be able to show every submission, and I'll <laughs> still have, you know, four hours to two Rob, minutes in length. Rob, you cut out there for and a second. Can you uh, just repeat that last part for us? Yeah, so I, I, I did find um, kind of when I was programming the event that a lot of submissions that were coming through were on the, the, the shorter end. And um, so a lot of the things that we were getting through were, were two to, were like a minute to four minutes long max. And um, so I had set the, uh, the one of the criteria the festival I'd set is that the minimum you can have, I think, is 15 seconds and the maximum you can have is 15 minutes. And the idea being is that, you know, you can if you can tell a story in any length of time, you can tell a story. But um, I suppose for the submission process, that's the kind of way we're working. We have it set up worldwide. You can submit through festival uh, film freeway and, uh, and uh, that's the main source. Um, and the submissions are between 15 seconds to 15 minutes long. There's a small questionnaire uh, because I kind of need to uh, be able to establish that the film was shot on a phone. And generally, I'm, you're able to tell the quality of submissions come through. You're able to tell straight away. Um, uh, there's a lot of the submissions that we get through are quite vibrant, and people are doing kind of really, really interesting things with them. And it's a, stuff you could clearly only get away with on a, on a phone. An example would be there was a, someone shot a love story about a couple who traveled to Havana. And they shot a lot of sequences on a plane. And what they did was they taped the phone above them for one shot. And then they taped the phone to the back of the chair so they get a two shot in. So it was clear that they'd used the phone and they'd kind of done it incognito on the plane. So the small questionnaire, there's like five questions. It's basically, you know, uh, what phone did you use? What software did you use? Obviously, you can use additional equipment. You can use tripods, all that sort of general filmmaking stuff. You can edit. You don't have to edit on your phone. You can edit uh, externally if you'd like. It's a small questionnaire. You submit your film, um, and then uh, that's really it. It's five questions, and um, as long as it's shot on a phone, um, that's the really only criteria that's in play. Um, and then away you go. Know, you're free to end, and um, mm. that's kind of really playing the stuff that's coming through. Um, it's kind of crazy and interesting. Um, and then on top of that, obviously, there's the categories: there's documentary, there's fiction, there's music video, and there's an Irish specific category something i'm really trying to drum up interest here is because i think i mentioned earlier on there's a bit of resistance here in ireland for people shooting on their phones and um, i'm finding a lot of a, a bit of a pushback from the community here and people view it as something quite quaint but not quite serious and so i'm really trying to drive uh i'm, I'm attending a lot of colleges and stuff here really kind of trying to show people what you can do on your phone and the hope is that i can kind of get more interest in a, in a, in a national level because internationally it's taken off but nationally, I, I'm not seeing the same kind of pickup at the moment. And that's kind of hopefully the festival will get the word out about that. So um, you have five categories uh, and you just have to shoot on a phone and, and, and you're in, basically. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Have you, ever had, like, have you ever had anyone try and sneak in a film that wasn't <laughs> shot on a phone? <laughs> <laughs> no, not that I, unless they Unless it was so good, I didn't notice. No, um, generally... I no, I, I I haven't yet. Um, there's been there's been one or two things that I would that have been submitted that I would I, I because sometimes people email me directly with kind of links to films that they've made and they've asked me to watch them and sometimes I do watch them and and it's not necessarily that people are submitting film shot on on cameras and pretending they're short. Some people are just kind of filming, kind of shooting things and and submitting them and and kind of chancing their arm basically is the Irish expression. Um, but there's a small submission fee for the festival, and, and the reason there's a small submission fee, it's not enough to run the event, but uh, my concern was I wanted to be able to offer tailored feedback, because as a filmmaker myself, I understood that sometimes when I enter festivals, 
it's a bit frustrating when you don't hear anything back. So I wanted to be able to, to keep the number so small that I'd be able to communicate with this community and be kind of be able to keep an open dialogue. So I set a small enough submission fee that really passionate what they've done would have no problem submitting it. And somebody who had just created something or shot something on their phone that, you know, might necessarily be if they weren't, you know, they weren't willing to put together the four dollars or whatever, it would mean that maybe it wasn't something they were particularly serious about. So uh, that allows me to keep the the number of submissions small. It allows me to screen almost everything I get in, and allows me to keep an open dialogue with the filmmakers. And I've been able to be in communication. I've been able to kind of become friends with a lot of the people who've submitted, and I, I'm able to keep a, a good rapport with them. Um, but in terms of people trying to sneak stuff in on a camera, no, not that I'm aware of. And if they have got through. Excellent, because <laughs> it's probably been screened fast. Well, no, but I, I'm pretty sure no. I, 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 I they, there's a questionnaire, and and uh, you can kind of tell the stuff that's coming through. You can tell. Well, when I first started with the selfies, uh, I was turned down several times for the very authenticity of the selfie. In other words. The lighting in one scene might have been inconsistent with the lighting in another scene if the girl did one scene inside and another scene outside and, um, you know, things like that. And I've been turned down because they were uh, vertical rather than horizontal. It's fascinating, but I know that this will all pass and I've gotten into some very big, important film festivals, uh, particularly three in the state of New Jersey. Yay! The Garden State Film Festival and um, the Rutgers International Film Festival. Hang on to your... No, hang on to your shorts. Yes, but I also have been on the bright side where I got my first award for an experimental film. That's, that's that awesome. That was great. And, that, and Megan got an award as the um, upcoming starlet yes. at, at Hang On To Your sport, uh, so, shorts, shorts. As Sports. Shorts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, Robert, have you ever come to the States? I have. I used to live, I was lucky enough to live in um, California for a bit. And um, I, yeah, fair bit. I was in San Jose only uh, maybe four months ago. So I've been in California a good few times. And New York, of course, I've been there as well. Are you going to come to New Jersey? I would love to. Uh, I, I am scheduled to go back over to the U.S. In, in, in the next couple of, uh, in the next three months, I believe. So um, uh, I would, I, and it'll be on your coast. So I would very much be interested in, 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 in popping into Jersey, New Jersey to see what it's all about. It's, yeah. I've, it's lovely. I've never been. I think you should you should yes. come to uh, yes. Share Universe Podcast Studio. I'd love to. Oh, that would be great. We'll do it live. That that would be fabulous. And he'll actually yes. be here. Yes. <laughs> uh, we can have him in our podcast too. Yeah. So, um, I think that this is very exciting. Now, when I make my film in the winter, I am going to have uh, a film, um, you know, a person who's you know very. A film, not a filmmaker, a cameraman, uh, have a smartphone, plus all the filming that the girl does. And this time I'm going to have her mother, who's a character in the, this film, and myself. I'm actually a minor character. We will all do bits of selfies. Um, but I don't know if I'll stop using a cameraman with the other camera I'm just not sure yet you know I don't want to spend all the time and effort on this film which may be really very important as it kind of pulls together the storylines in the last few films um, and then regret that I didn't have one professional camera going you know so understandable anyway. nice, uh, you always have that, that safety net as well you know what I mean just in case you have that in the back of your head you'll always have that and it'll take a while I think for 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 people to kind of yeah I understand what you mean. it would take a while I think to, to shake that mindset if it's a mindset you wanted to shake I think it would take a while yes. you'll always have in your head that I'm putting so much effort into this and I want to make sure it's done right and you know should I have something here as a backup just in case and I, I get that completely yeah yeah that's right so uh, yeah I, I 
destroyed my camera, so I wouldn't have that option. But uh, <laughs> I, just, I don't use it at all anymore. I don't bring it with me. But um, uh, but I, I sometimes think I should. But I just thankfully never pack it, so I always forget. Three phones, though, so that's back. Yeah, up. yeah. I'm just trying to think if there's anything important that we should exchange uh, in this particular show. Um, we didn't show all the films, and I don't think that really matters. Um, I think that I'll just mention that um, the two angles to my work, one is the drama of how kids are growing up and what they're feeling, and the other is encouraging them to make selfies and come on board with their feelings and their thoughts. And so... Um, I'm just going to keep plowing ahead just like you are because I think some people, they just have missions and thank, thank goodness I feel I have a mission. It sounds like you do too. I did, I, did, I, did, I did have a quick question about that. Do you find then when, when pupils and when, when younger people are using the phones to kind of get these, these stories across, do you find that they're more comfortable now using the phone to be able to – using the phone as a kind of a communication device to tell a story, or do you ever find there's a bit of a kind of resistance or people, you know, when people are inherently un uncomfortable yes. sometimes in front of a camera, do you find when they're using the phone, uh, it's something that they're, they're, they're a little bit easier to be able to kind of get their point across? Or, oh, or definitely. Definitely. Uh, last month we had a little, a girl, a younger girl, about 15, and she had something I mean, we were almost in tears listening to her, and I cannot believe she ever could have talked about how these friends had bullied her and isolated her if she weren't in her bedroom alone doing it and then feeling, you know, then at some point she felt safe enough that she wanted it seen. Yeah. When it's, when it's your tool, when it's your smartphone, when it's your iPad or something that you're using, it's something that you engage with you know, on a daily basis, and uh, it's not foreign, as opposed to a, a, a camera crew lighting and microphones in your face, which could be daunting and intimidating. Um, I have a seven-year-old and I have a fourteen-year-old, and they are perfectly comfortable. Makes me makes me a little uncomfortable, but they're perfectly comfortable with looking at the camera and speaking oh, and sharing their feelings. Yes. We're in that culture now because everyone's so open to sharing like thoughts on on youtube all you that's gotta do right. is just look that's into a right. camera and upload and there you go you know i would love to finish off i have one short one that is number five and i'll tell you why i'd like to show it it's one that megan did under my direction although we never quite used it in any film and i was spiritually very frustrated as a teenager and searching and never had really good answers. And I think a lot of kids are in that position. And that's what this 40-second film shows. Dad said we needed more religion in our lives. So now we go to the Worldwide Universal Ministry, and I don't like the minister at all. He doesn't even talk about things that apply to me, or kids my age. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I really want to know why things hurt so much, or... Or why wars still go on? Why all these kids are dying of overdoses and making bad decisions? And what happens when you die? But no, all he tries to tell us is, remember, King David had great struggles. So? <laughs> I really liked that. <laughs> yeah. You really unlocked like a really cool idea for a subgenre. Like I I think that it's something that could be incredible. Thank you. I'm going to go to sleep with those words. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> the uh, no I've, I I uh, what I've seen uh, is incredible myself. And um, I will say the one thing I am very interested in uh, as you probably know we have our own home language here uh, the Irish language which is um, not something that's that's well spoken here anymore. And in a couple of weeks' time, I'm, I'm going to work with um, some an Irish-speaking school here. And the reason I'm kind of excited about it is is that our, 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 the Irish language here is something that's very much viewed as kind of a very old school, very old type thing. And what they're really trying to do is kind of take the language and match it with kind of a new kind of format and a new, as you were saying earlier on, a new canvas of storytelling. 
and kind of make, make it kind of emerging old meets new. So I have a two day course where we're going to sit down and we're going to make a film from start to finish. And it's going to be in the Irish language. Just really interested to see what these pupils who predominantly speak this language, it's in an Irish speaking region of the country, which is like very, very far uh, over on the West coast. And it's near Galway if, you, if you've been, so it's, it's a little bit more isolated. So I'm really excited to see the kind of stories they're going to tell because it's very much a, uh, uh, it's very much a tool that they would not be using to tell the story in that language at this present moment in time. Um, and it's not something that in Ireland you would see much of kind of films and stories in that language and um, being told by younger people. So that's what I, I'll give you feedback on. it. I'll keep in touch. I'll let oh, you know, good, but I'm very good. excited to that, see. That is exciting. They I, get across because I, I have yet to see anything like that here. I was wondering whether the films from last year, have you thought about, somehow setting them up uh, on a website and um, maybe you can't if you didn't get permission, I don't know, but this year you probably could. And it would be a wonderful opportunity to get the word out. You know, maybe you do a blog once in a while to go with it or whatever, but you'd be really emphasizing this whole niche that you've developed and you'd be showing at least a spattering of what people are turning in. That's a, that's an excellent idea. And the reason I couldn't do it is the permissions thing yeah. in the first yeah. year. That's why I couldn't. A lot of the stuff I got, I just didn't. There was the, 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 um, a lot of the stuff that was submitted, I just didn't have access to do it. But it is something I'm planning on doing for year two. Good. Uh, one, of the things I, I, one of the things I did manage to do, which was great, was I, I reached out to a local college and I, I allowed the, the film society there to submit to submit to the festival and the, one of the submissions that came true won and they didn't even think they were qualified to win because I, I, I had invited them to enter but they had shot something um, and I, shot, I will actually send it to you and it's, you would actually really enjoy it it's about a relationship between two friends uh, before they go to college two young guys before they go to college and how the friendship gets separated further and further away and it's all done through selfies through uh, talking to each other through Skype and it's just, it's, it's two minutes long, yes. and each time the phone call begins, their friendship is a little more distance, a little more distance. Yeah. And by, you know, towards the end, they're almost complete strangers. And it's, I think it's something you'd find very, very interesting. It's, it's, I find it very powerful. I can send you on the, that's something that I've been, I, that I have access to that I've been showing a lot of people. I think it's a really good use of the, of the format. And I think it, you'd really appreciate it. It's, it's, it's very personal and it's very one to one. I loved it. Thank you. I'll look forward to that. Um, we want to thank you very, very much for being on the show. I'm sorry that it's a little bit, you know, we've got a little bit of noise and whatever, but look, you're 3,000 miles away. We did pretty, pretty good job. Um, and is Antonio still on? Well, whether he is or not, yeah, he's going to be able to hear us anyway. We want, so. we want to thank him. We want him to know. Uh, we we'll, can call him in a minute. Yeah. We uh, couldn't yeah. do two at the same time. Oh, okay. So thank you so much and look forward to being in touch. Thank you. And yes, we will be in touch and we'll have the links to all your information, you know, down below on the podcast. So thank you for taking the time. I can't believe I was speaking to somebody in Europe today. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. What a nice guy. Yes, that was it. That was awesome. Now we're going to call Antonio? Yeah, I think we should at least thank him. No problem. Let's see if he'll pick up. Pick up Antonio. Where's Antonio based out of? Massachusetts? Massachusetts. I'm not sure what town he lives in. Never asked him. God, you're hearing. Yeah, he might have went to bed. Yeah. It's kind of late, but you know what? Thank you so much, thank Antonio. You. Uh, on a personal note, you know, uh, th thank you, uh, Barbara, for having me. But uh, I would definitely love, look forward to hearing more about Antonio's journey and and, and yes, the I will of young definitely people. keep you posted on his journey because he's someone I'd like to have on. You know, I'd like to have some of these kids sort of regulars, and they come on once in a while because it makes it much more real to follow them. <laughs>